Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue the calculation of rigid connection of a beam with an end plate to the column. In the previous three videos, we went through the calculation of tension capacity of the flange of the column. Then we went through the uh, resistance of the column's web. And finally, we went through end plate under bending moment. So now the only remaining part for the Tension is the beam web. To recap what we had, uh, again, we had a beam HEA200 connected to a column HEB300 with an end plate with dimension of 250 millimeter as the width, 320 millimeter as height with the thickness of 16 millimeter. All the components are with S355 and it is bolted with 6M20 class 88 for this example. We went through the calculation of the columns web, column flange, and then uh, we calculated the capacity of the end plate. Now we need to consider the resistance of beam in tension. Again, we should go through table 6.1. In table 6.1, we can see that beam web in tension is given in 6268, and you can see how it looks like. We had row number one, row number two, and then the combination of those two. If we go through the 6268, we can find out how it should be calculated. Beam web in tension in a bolted end plate connection. The design tension resistance of the beam web should be obtained from the given equation 622. Here we have B effective T W B representing web of the beam and then thickness of the web and also yielding a stress of the web divided by partial factor gamma m0 which is 1. In the given equation 622 we need to determine b effective twb which is the effective length of the relevant t stop. Uh, if we look at the figure in item number 8 table 61 we can see that it is relevant to the bolts which are below the tensile flange. So here we have row one and row two. Row one is outside the flange, so it is not relevant. The only relevant bolt row is row number two. So for this, from the end plate calculation in bolt row number two, we can take the uh, effective length of the equivalent T stop. So for that, coming back to our previous video, L effective one and two, uh, are 368 millimeter and now we can just continue with L effective minimum which is 368 millimeter and then we can just easily put them in the equation 622. Now B effective is 368 millimeter Web thickness of the beam is 6.5 millimeter for HEA 200 and FY 355 megapascal gamma M0 is 1 so FTWBRD will be 368 times 6.5355 so it's 850 kN. Now we are in the stage that we can summarize for the tension capacity of our connection. If we come back to our original sketch of the connection point, when this beam is going to be under bending moment, the top flange will be in tension. And it starts to transfer this with the welds toward the end plate and then the end plate will transfer the tension to the flange and from the flange it will go through the column so in this case some parts are going to be under tension now we can have a look first we have this 
side for the column flange, individual row one, individual row two, and group of the bolts. Then we have the column flange in transverse bending, individual row, and group. Then it comes to end plate, individual row, individual row. We didn't have any group. And now for the beam, we have only tension in row number two. So here is what we calculated in these four videos. It's better to have a table and write down, for example, row number one, row number two, row one, and row two. And here we can write down the failure mode. We can start from left to right, column web in transverse tension. Then column flange in transverse bending, end plate in bending, and finally beam web in tension. Column web in tension 790, 790, 1006 all in kilonewton. Column flange in transverse bending 282, 282 and it was 564 end plate in bending 232 282 nothing beam wave intention nothing for row number one nothing for group of bolts and we had 850 for this and then from each row you need to take the minimum value so minimum 232 kilonewton 282 kN and 564 kN. We should notice that the summation of row 1 and row 2 should not exceed row 1 and 2 together. So we just check 232 kN plus 282 kN is less than 564 kN, which is valid. Now the tension part is completely done here and just to have a summary, we can come back to the table 6.1 to check what has been done and what is still uh, needed to be considered. Now here in table 6.1, uh, what is relevant to our case? Column web panel in shear, it has not been done yet. Column web in transverse compression, not done. Item 3, column web in transfer tension, we did this, it has been done. Column flange in bending, yes, we did this, end plate in bending. Number six, not relevant to our case. Number seven, beam or column flange and web in compression, not done yet. Beam web in tension, yes, we did this part. Plate in tension or compression, not in our case right now. Bolt in tension here you can see that with column flange 6264 relevant to item number 4 yes done 6265 yes done and this is not relevant so this item is also done bolt in shear we will come back to this later and bolts in bearing so it is not uh, on beam flange column flange end plate or clean now we need to go through the compressive side uh, item number two and item number seven and finally we will go through item number one that's it end of this video well, i will continue with the calculation of compressive sides for the column and beam in the following videos thank you for watching see you next time bye